How's it going, everybody? It's your boy Mike from Seattle, and I'm back with part two of my interview with Caleb. He just explained how he got started in real estate, did his first and his second deal. He moved to the same market in the Midwest in Indiana that I invest in, and now he's going to explain to you how he converted his Roth IRA into a self-directed IRA and then managed to purchase six deals as a package using seller financing from the same guy that I got my seller finance deal from to jump him from rental four to rental number 10. So I hope that you guys enjoy this interview. Again, leave questions for him down in the comments if you have them. He does answer to everything and let's jump right back into it. Okay, so you did number one then you move to the midwest and very quickly you go from number two to eleven and included in that in all your purchases out there so you did ten of them out there you got one six package deal all seller financed through your own self-directed ira is that right so it was a six house deal um, really it was a five house deal and a one house deal okay all in one um, one of them was from a self-directed IRA, uh, which is like if you've heard of an IRA or Roth IRA, it's that. Mm -hmm. But there's a version of it that you can buy whatever you want investment-wise basically instead of just getting stocks or mutual funds. Right. Um, you can buy a rental property. You can buy other types of assets. You can invest in a syndication like in an apartment complex that somebody's doing. Mm -hmm. Um, or in mineral rights, stuff like that. You can do you can do alternative investments. Is what it's called, and real estate. So a self-directed Roth IRA is what I have. Mm. And the way I did that, uh, I guess I guess I'll name drop. So I started out with a Charles Schwab uh, Roth IRA. Charles Schwab, Fidelity, and Vanguard are generally like the main three I would recommend to people. Mm. Um, you can currently you can put six thousand dollars per year per person into an IRA, and that IRA can be a traditional or Roth. Uh, we won't get into that now, um, but it's six thousand per year. So I've been doing that since about 2015, since I was in like my second year of college. Mm. Um, with a little bit of money, I scraped together, and I've been maxing out my Roth IRA for the last uh, however many years that is, like six years. Mm -hmm. And my wife uh, now started doing that around 2017 or so once she kind of got on board with the whole plan so I had that and I moved a bunch of that money over to a different Roth IRA that's a self-directed one with a company called Quest Trust Company and what they are is a self-directed retirement account custodian and their role is to be kind of like a bank entity I have an account with them and then I interface through uh, their customer service uh, kind of stuff through their portal. Um, and we work with them to buy this real estate investment. So in this case, it was a house. Just It was a $35,000 rental property mm -hmm. with a tenant in it that's already cash flowing. And we bought it all cash in the self-directed Roth IRA. Uh, now bringing it back full circle this was part of broad negotiations for six houses uh, the six houses round numbers uh, were a total of about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in value uh, I agreed to put or I got him to let me put down fifty thousand so twenty percent total mm -hmm. thirty five thousand of that went into one house that I bought all cash with the self-directed Roth IRA now to him, it doesn't really matter what I'm doing with that once I buy it, but to me, that is its own separate thing. That mm -hmm. account has to be completely separate from from me, Caleb. I'm an entity. My Roth IRA is an entity. It's like a different person. Right. So that person bought one, and then I only had to put down another 15000 out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. That came out of, you know, out of my checking account that I've been saving up from my paycheck. 15,000 uh, plus all the closing costs, which was like another four grand or so mm. uh, for those five houses. And so for about $19,000, I bought those other five houses. Um, and I used what's called seller financing, where the person selling them is an investor with hundreds of rental properties. 
Uh, he's elderly. He's been doing this for decades. And these properties are mostly or completely paid off. Mm -hmm. He owns them free and clear. Um, and he's actually able to act as the bank. So instead of me paying him 250000 and borrowing 80% of that from a bank, I can just pay him 20% down and then continue to pay him the other 80% over 15 years in this case. Right. So it's amortized over 15 years, 4.9% interest. Um, and that's it. As far as the closing process, it's similar to when you do a cash purchase. So you don't have the big, huge loan costs that you do when you get a mortgage. Instead right. of $4,000 of closing costs, it's like 800. Mm -hmm. So you save a ton of money there. Um, and then for, you know, less than $4,000 per property, I was able to buy these other five. And that's about the amount of money it takes to buy one house even in this market where we're right. investing where there's some cheaper properties it takes you know 16 to 20,000 out of pocket to make a down payment plus closing costs i was able to get 5 um and that kind of sent me you know the 5 plus the 1 that yeah. was 6 that was added to 3 that i had at the time and that put me uh that put me to 9 mm. um within just a very short period of time yeah, and so for people who are watching this, who are the self-directed IRA process, if if you had bought all six of those houses within your self-directed IRA, you actually wouldn't be able to get at any of that cash flow because the self-directed IRA, like a normal IRA, if you have a Roth IRA, when your stocks increase in value, you can't pull that out without paying penalties. So by wheeling and dealing on the fly and getting him to allow you to say, hey, look, I'm buying X number of houses from you this much down. But instead of putting 20% on all houses, why don't I just put a big chunk of that money into one house in my self-directed IRA and I will forget about that cash flow. But keep the other five accessible to you so you can rake in that money and then snowball it into more houses each month. That was the strategy behind it, right? Absolutely, yeah. And a and a distinction I would want to make for anybody watching this is that the Roth IRA, the self-directed Roth IRA, and me, it has to be completely separate. I cannot touch this. That one house transaction is its own thing, completely separate mm -hmm. from these other five. Right. So, but because I was creative, and I just like this just came to me, of like I wonder if I could. It's a good idea. I wonder if I could do this. <laughs> yeah. Like, holy smokes. If I could do this, I'm going to do it again and again because yeah. I've been saving in my Roth IRA for years and I have this money in stocks getting, you know, what does the stock market get over 8%. a 30 year period? <laughs> yeah. You know, 8%, which is, which is good and all. And right. I think, I think more people should do it. Most mm. people don't. Right. But because I have that and now I've, I've shifted gears into a different strategy it's it's a way that I can access this capital mm -hmm. in a way that indirectly benefits my investments outside of that account. Right, right. Yeah, because you bought it all from the same guy. You're like, look, man, you're getting the same number of dollars from me. It's just how about I put all of the dollars towards this one property and then you give me the rest of these with 5% down or whatever it would have calculated out to. So it's about 7 Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really smart, very creative, which again is really the biggest benefit – to seller financing. I bought my first one with traditional, well, conventional loan with 5% down was my first house. Then I did a conventional 20% down loan and then another one of those and then I did seller financing. And when I did my fourth deal, which was seller financing, I was like, why would I ever buy anything with traditional financing ever again? I don't have to pay nearly as much in closing costs. I can negotiate my own terms even though the guy we bought those from was, was a bit of a pain in the neck. It was still significantly better than traditional financing, just to, it, yeah. with the numbers. So, okay, so one, two, all the way to nine. This year, you bought two more properties. Even though it's crazy, even though it's 2021 and it's just wild right now, how'd you find these deals and get them? Um, so the other two, uh, I closed on both of those in February of this year, um, on the same day, actually. So those were both from uh, what's called a turnkey provider. So it's a company that they are basically uh, a group of investors that have formed into a company. Uh, they flip houses. They have an in-house property management company. Um, and they 
So they acquire this house, you know, they probably paid $7,000 for it. It was abandoned, covered in mold, burned down, something like that. Mm. They put twenty five dollars to $35,000 into it. They're all in for whatever that adds up to, plus some holding costs. They turn around and sell it to me for fifty, sixty, seventy thousand, 70000 mm. with a tenant in it, um, with a property manager, cash flowing from day one, from the day I close, including prorated rent and all those good goodies that's mm. just extra money in your pocket when you close on it. Right. Um, and so there was one, uh, actually these, these two particular properties were both 55,000 and this was, this was February and I had gotten them under contract like in January. So this was right before all the real estate craziness really started to take mm -hmm. off over the last couple months. Mm -hmm. And, um, one of them, I was just, this, this particular turnkey company, they don't have like a long wait list. It's pretty much just they send out an email to 500 people and whoever emails them back or calls them in like the first 30 seconds gets the house. You that's gotta be quick. You've gotta yeah, be that's, quick. That's how they do it. <laughs> um, so I had, I had said like, Hey, I want this one. I was, you know, sitting there like waiting at my computer. I ran the numbers super fast because <laughs> that's my strategy. I'm just like waiting, refreshing my email. Um, and I said, Hey, I want it. And he said, okay, send the earnest money. So I did. Uh, we started going through that process. A few days later, keep in mind, like this is in the middle of I'm working on this six house deal. I just got another one under contract. And then a few days after that, this provider, he calls me, the, the turnkey provider, he calls me and says, hey, Caleb, I just had a guy who became a victim of wire fraud. He basically got like prank called by this scammer who somehow scared him tricked him into wiring like the closing money oh, no. for this house to a fake person and there's FBI and all kinds of stuff involved oh, long no. story short this guy doesn't have another money right to right. buy this house right. do you want it and I said send me the details and then that night I said yeah I'll do it it was also 55,000 pretty similar numbers to the one I had just gotten under contract right um, it was, you know, like less than a mile away from that house. Pictures look great. Um, so I said, sure, let's do it. I'll start the due diligence period, get it under contract. You know, you get the inspection, get the appraisal, start a mortgage application for that one. Um, and so then those two closed, uh, in February, actually just like four or five days after the six houses finally closed, which had spent three months, um, you know, working on that deal. Mm -hmm. So... Um, those are both in February, and now uh, it's May 23rd, 2021 now, and I should be closing on number 12 uh, sometime within the next week or so. So the moral, is, the moral of this story and of this video is is that you, the average person like me, should feel bad about yourself. You should feel bad about yourself because <laughs> you are not nearly as successful. Caleb, how old are you today? 26. God. How old were you when you bought your first one? 22. Yeah, Caleb, you can go kick rocks, my friend. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so you know, if you thought that you were a highly motivated, successful person who could be good at investing in real estate, don't compare yourself to Caleb. Compare yourself to someone who is much more reasonable and balanced and slow, like me. Because coming up on 12 in a four-year period, starting at the age of 22 with a blue-collar job of working in the military, uh, that's pretty darn impressive, man. That is, and yeah, that's that's amazing. So what would you what would you give what advice would you give to someone who wants to buy their first rental property? To get that first one, I mean, there's a lot of different strategies you could do. Um, not all of them take a ton of cash. You should definitely like save up money, you know, maybe get 10, 15, $20,000 in the bank if you can. Um, if that's, if that's like an overwhelming challenge, I think there's a lot of risks that you can be taking on by trying to get real estate. Um, you know, if, if you can't manage, if you can't get your own house in order, um, I think you should address those things first. Mm. Um, that being said, like there's a lot of different ways that we kind of talked about earlier that you can get a primary residence and that's probably the most accessible path for most people. Um, I would, I would do a lot of reading and research and try to like reach out to somebody like myself or Mike and see if we can like answer some of your questions or hop on the phone or whatever and see what your situation is. 
um, to to see if you can find something that would work as an investment property to buy as a primary residence. I, I would always suggest that you get a primary residence that would work as a rental property if you needed to move out of it. Yeah, like my duplex, for instance, 100%. So really, the, the last big takeaway, it seems like it was extremely, extremely impactful to have Mark, our shared mentor. So not only did he provide you with the turnkey provider hookup, the market you bought in, the property manager, but you didn't mention not the self-directed IRA strategy he told us about, and then Quest, the company who does it, he told us about. So if if you're looking at getting started in real estate, it's important to find someone who's doing what you want to do and then become friends with them, learn from them, and, and move forward from that. Caleb, your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and then like in my case, this is just somebody that I knew in a different context for several years. Uh, he was like, he was the dad of two guys that I was teammates with in college. And I had like crashed at his place on the drive from Georgia to Connecticut one winter and his son like rode with me. And it was just like, so we met that way. I was, you know, 20 years old and he tried to talk to me about stock investing. I wasn't interested. <laughs> and then on the way back through the following semester, same thing. He tried to talk to me about stock investing. I was a little bit more interested. It kind of went like that. And, you know, we've texted over the years. At the time, he had, you know, zero rental properties. And then the next time he had one. And then the next time he had three. And then as we had built, you know, we just built a relationship organically over time. And then he was like, hey, do you want to invest in rental property like where I'm doing it? And I was like, yeah, sure. He's like, all right, when? I was like, I don't know, probably <laughs> later. I'm busy, and then, so he just kept asking me, yeah. like every month, every couple yeah. months, like, hey, when when are you gonna have, you know, twelve thousand dollars? When when do you want to buy one? Mm -hmm. Like, I can help you. When do you want to get one? Kept kept like staying on me, and this probably went on for a year, and then I bought one. And once I bought one, I bought two, and once I bought two, I bought six more. So. Yeah, yeah, and now and now. You know, once you're at where you're at now with 12, I mean, that passive that passive income, it, I mean, it's starting to add up pretty quickly at this point, I would imagine, right? It is, yeah. So, I mean, I don't mind I don't mind sharing this. So, like, my current cash flow um, from the 10 properties I have, that excludes the 11th one that's in the self-directed Roth IRA because I can't touch that. Um, the monthly cash flow is about $1,600 per month right now. And that's straight uh, profit. That's straight profit, and yeah. that's that's pretty conservative, um, based on like more than that amount mm -hmm. is also coming into my checking account. On top of that, right. that's budgeted for future stuff, like you know when a roof needs to be replaced, things like right. that. Uh, it's called capital expenditures. I'm um, also budget for vacancy and maintenance. Right, right. So, for example, like that 1600 is cash flow, and then maybe another. 1800 2000 ish is also coming into my checking account on top of that that's mm. budgeted for future stuff but since i already have an adequate total emergency fund for all of my properties that's already saved up the reality is i'm actually reinvesting the 1600 plus the 1800 right. every month right yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why the investing in real estate is so attractive. And I, and I think I'm right at that threshold because I'm, I'm kind of similar. I'm starting to bring in a decent amount of money with the three that I have out there. Um, brings in a decent amount of money, but the overall total profit cash flow still hasn't hit $1,000 yet. Uh, with one more property, it will. Um, so that's that's my next uh, goal is to get that. Obviously, I always get that next one. But um, Caleb, I appreciate you for coming on and sharing your story. Um, we'll probably have you on again as you continue to grow. Uh, for those of you who ever want to chat with him, he's in the comment section of most of my videos. Um, Caleb, if you want to share your Instagram or any way people can get a hold of you, feel free. Um, and then, yeah, do, is there any way you want people to get a hold of you? Sure. Um, you can look me up on Instagram uh, at Caleb Teach, C A L E B T E A C H. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Message him. I mean, he's a smart guy, young guy, much more of a stud than I could ever hope to be. Thanks for making me feel inadequate. And we'll catch you next time, man. Yeah. <laughs>